Welcome to the UW Medicine Ultrasound Curriculum Introductory Module, a collaboration with the Institute for Simulation and Interdisciplinary Studies and the Center for Health Sciences Interprofessional Education, Research, and Practice. The first step in learning to use ultrasound is to have a basic understanding of how medical ultrasound works. In this presentation, I will review some basic ultrasound physics and then give an overview of image interpretation and acquisition. Specifically, I will discuss the basic physics of ultrasound, interpreting tissue echogenicity, choosing the appropriate transducer for common exams, image orientation, depth and gain, and the difference between 2D, M mode, and color Doppler on a very simple level. An acoustic wave can be described using four characteristics its amplitude, frequency, propagation velocity, and wavelength. The frequency of a wave is measured in hertz, or number of cycles per second. Waves with a frequency of 20 to 20,000 hertz are audible to the human ear. Waves with a frequency less than 20 hertz are considered infrasound. Elephants use infrasound to communicate with each other across long distances. Waves with a frequency greater than 20,000 hertz are called ultrasound. Bats use ultrasound, both for communication and echolocation. Medical ultrasound uses waves with frequencies between 1 and 20 megahertz, orders of magnitude higher frequency than audible sound waves. Propagation velocity is the speed at which an acoustic wave moves through a medium. This is dependent on the density and compressibility of the medium and determines acoustic impedance. We'll come back to that in a moment when we discuss tissue echogenicity. Wavelength is defined as the distance from peak to peak of a given wave. It is mathematically equal to the propagation velocity divided by frequency. Shorter wavelengths have better image resolution, but less depth of penetration. Conversely, longer wavelengths can penetrate more deeply, but create images with less sharp resolution. Let's go through the steps that occur when we turn the ultrasound machine on and place the probe on a patient. Electricity is applied across the crystals in the transducer, causing them to vibrate and emit an ultrasound wave. This is called the converse piezoelectric effect. A layer of conductive gel helps facilitate penetration of the wave through the skin and into deep structures. The wave is reflected at the interface between tissues that have different acoustic impedances, for example, subcutaneous soft tissue and a vessel wall. The transducer detects the returning sound wave and transforms it into an electric signal. This is called the piezoelectric effect. The signal is then processed and displayed as an image on the screen. When an ultrasound beam passes through a tissue without significant reflection, this area appears black, or anechoic, on the image. Simple fluid is anechoic, such as the amniotic fluid in this ultrasound image of a fetus. When a wave is almost entirely reflected back to the transducer, due to a tissue interface with a large difference in acoustic impedance, the structure appears white or hyperechoic, such as the skull in this image. Diaphragm, pericardium, and gallstones would also appear hyperechoic. Soft tissues causing partial beam reflection appear hypoechoic, or various shades of gray. One initial challenge in ultrasound image interpretation is understanding the orientation of the image on the screen. The top of the screen represents the most superficial part of the tissue you are scanning, or the skin surface. The bottom of the screen represents the deepest part of the tissue, in this case, three centimeters deep into a patient's neck. The internal jugular vein is seen at one centimeter deep and the carotid artery at two centimeters. Differentiating superficial and deep on the ultrasound screen is fairly straightforward, but left and right depends on how you hold the transducer. Each transducer has an indicator of some sort on one side, such as a groove or a raised dot. This indicator corresponds to the orientation mark on the ultrasound image. We will discuss image orientation in greater detail in the Knobology module. For now, keep in mind that you can use this orientation mark to orient yourself to an image on the screen. For example, here the transducer indicator is pointing to the patient's left. This corresponds to the orientation mark, the blue dot in the upper left part of the screen. So I know that the left side of the screen represents the patient's left side. For other exams, instead of left and right, you will use a cephalad-caudad orientation. Here, the transducer marker is pointing to the patient's head, 
So I know that the left side of my screen where I see the orientation marker is cephalad. The right side is caudad or towards the feet. This helps me understand the anatomy I see on my screen. The lung, which can look very like liver when it's consolidated, is cephalad and the liver is caudad. Let's switch gears and talk about how basic physics knowledge will help you acquire a good ultrasound image. The first step is choosing the appropriate transducer, and the key to doing that is understanding that the frequency of waves emitted by a transducer has a direct relationship with the sharpness or detail of the images it produces, and an inverse relationship with depth of penetration. To illustrate, here we see two commonly used probes. The linear array transducer is high frequency, 6 to 13 megahertz, and has a maximum depth of penetration around 6 centimeters. It produces a beautifully detailed, rectangular shaped image that is ideal for superficial applications like vascular access. Sector transducers include the curvilinear and phased array transducers. This phased array is 1 to 5 megahertz with a deeper maximum penetration of 35 centimeters and a small square footprint, ideal for getting in between ribs. It produces a pie-shaped image and is ideal for imaging deeper structures like the liver and pleural effusion shown here. Within the constraints of the transducer you choose, the depth of field can be adjusted to best visualize the structures of interest. Along the right side of each image are depth markers. The image on the left of the screen is of a patient's neck prior to central line placement. We can see the internal jugular vein and the carotid artery about one centimeter deep to the skin while the overall depth of the image is over 5 centimeters. In the knobology module, we'll show you how to reduce the depth on this image, as the structures of interest currently appear small at the top of the screen, and the image includes a lot of soft tissue deep to the vessels that we don't need to see. The image on the right shows a different patient's internal jugular vein, 3 centimeters deep to the skin. We don't see the carotid artery in this image because it's a deeper structure. The depth of this image must be increased, to include both the IJ and carotid artery before we would attempt central line placement. Gain is the degree of amplification applied to signals returning to the transducer. It can be thought of simplistically as brightness control. Low gain will drop out some signal altogether and result in a darker screen such as the one on the far left here. High gain will amplify these signals more, resulting in more artifact and a brighter screen such as the one on the far right. Optimal gain, like the image in the middle, will provide the best grayscale to differentiate between structures in the image. All of the images we've seen so far are 2D, or B-mode ultrasound. We sometimes also use M-mode ultrasound, which shows the motion over time of structures seen in a single axis. Here, an operator is scanning a patient's inferior vena cava, or IVC. We can see the vessel, surrounded by liver, as it enters the right atrium of the heart. We can see that the IVC diameter changes with respiration, and we'd like to quantify that change. In M mode, we see the previous image at the top of the screen. We've drawn a line across the IVC just proximal to where it enters the right atrium. This isn't a perfect shot, as we aren't quite perpendicular to the vessel, but it conveys the idea. Again, we see the IVC, surrounded by liver, at the bottom of the screen, we see the same structures that this line crosses, and we can watch them move over time. As we saw in the video, the vessel walls move closer and farther apart as the patient breathes, and we can measure the distance between the walls of the vessel with calipers. Note the A marks are much further apart than the B marks. Color Doppler is used to identify and enhance the imaging of blood flow within structures such as vessels or the heart. Very simply, the ultrasound waves emitted by the transducer bounce off of moving red blood cells and return to the transducer. They will return with a variable frequency depending on the movement of these blood cells. If the blood is moving away from the probe, they will return less and less frequently. If the blood is coming toward the transducer, those signals will return at an increasing frequency. The ultrasound machine interprets that frequency variation and applies color to the ultrasound screen to illustrate the movement. Note that the precise color is a function of the direction of blood flow, not an indication of arterial versus venous flow. To summarize key points from this presentation, simple fluid is anechoic or black, 
Bone, air, diaphragm, and pericardium are hyperechoic, or white. Other soft tissues are shades of gray. The indicator on the transducer corresponds to the orientation mark on the image. In later modules, we will discuss using this mark to navigate as you scan. The high-frequency linear array transducer is the best choice for most vascular ultrasound when you want a sharp, shallow picture. A lower frequency phased array sector transducer is better for chest and cardiac exams when you need to visualize deeper structures, and will suffice for abdominal exams as well if you don't have access to a curvilinear transducer. Remember to optimize your image on every exam by adjusting depth and gain. We'll show you how in the next module. Finally, most of the ultrasound you will use at the point of care is 2D B mode imaging. But some applications will use M-Mode to look at a specific imaging plane over time, or Color Doppler to assess vascular structures. We will discuss these modes in other modules in the appropriate clinical context. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Grace Tu, the Center for Health Sciences, Interprofessional Education Research and Practice, and UW-ISIS for supporting this module.